This video is now in session, and New York. New York's one of the only states that Democrats can actually gerrymander. If we look at all the states in the Union, uh, in terms of the states that Democrats can gerrymander, it's not that much. It's Illinois, it's Oregon, which they can't really gerrymander at this point because of technicalities. Nevada, which they can't really do anything about since it's already, there's not really much they can do to gain a seat. They can try to shore up a seat, but not nothing more. New Mexico, that's the only state where they can gain one seat, so as Maryland. Um, and that's practically it. But New York. New York is really the only state besides Illinois where the Democrats can substantially flip seats, uh, Republican seats to be more in favor of them. And we can see through this map here that this map is a 23 Democratic favor. Um, <clears throat> A 23 Democratic favorite map. Now, New York is losing a House seat, which is unfortunate because that House seat went over to Minnesota, a state where there's a divided government. So in that, uh, so that district, which could have been Democratic, is now instead Republican. And if we look here at the New York state, um, we now have only 26 seats. We, um, we used to have like 43 seats. Now we have 26 over a series of decades. And with these 26 seats, Democrats are trying to make it so that there's only three Republican seats. And we can see here that um, this is currently the map, and this is what the map will look like. Now, where those three Republican seats are coming from, it's from the 23rd district, from the 22nd uh, district, um, uh, not from the 22nd district, uh, from the, um, uh, where, from the 12th district, I believe, so 23rd, 12th, and 21st, uh, but I'm not quite, no, 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 wait, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not quite sure where the 3rd district comes from, it's 21st, 23rd, and then the 3rd district would be, uh, New York's 12th, um, New York's 12th, New York, uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so tw let's just assume t uh, the 12th district, it could also be, no, I very doubt the 19th district, because it has Poughkeepsie in it, but let's just say it's the 12th district, so the 12th district, the 23rd district, and the 21st district, all, uh, Democratic seats, so with that, um, uh, I really question that. It could also be 24th. Whatever. Whatever it is, uh, Democrats are gaining a couple of seats from this. Right now, they have a 19 uh, to 8 majority, and they would expand that to a 23 to 3 majority, which means that they would gain four seats from the Republicans, and that would be pretty good for the Democrats. Um, but they can't really do anything further than that. They can't really make a 24, to, uh, 24 Democratic to Republican uh, scenario or even a 25-1 scenario. Um, just because New York isn't that quite partisan for New York, uh, for Democrats. But uh, there are several things that this map does. It, first of all, um, it makes the 22nd district much more favorable for Democrats. So if you saw in the 2020 election, this was one of the most contested seats in the House besides Iowa's second district. So in this district, I believe uh, Claudia Tenney, the Republican challenger who used to be the representative of this district, uh, won the district in 2020 by around 113 votes, and thus she is now in Congress. Um, so what the Democrats want to do is they want to make the seat much more favorable to the Democratic, or what, who was the Democratic incumbent, uh, Anthony Brindisi. So what they're doing is they get in Ithaca, they get in, not Ithaca, they get in Utica, and as well as Syracuse and combining that together to create the new 22nd district instead of getting the Utica suburbs and that would be much more favorable for Democrats. Um, and the other thing that they're doing with that is they're putting Claudia Tenney, the Republican incumbent, in, uh, in, um, in the seat of uh, um, in the seat of Stefanik, El Elise Stefanik, Elise Stefanik. <laughs> um, yeah, they're getting they're combining the seat so that those two incumbents will have to go against each other in the 2022 election, and they would go against each other in the primary. Now, Stefanik would almost definitely win that primary because she is now the third highest ranking House Republican. But if she wasn't, it would have been a very big battle. Now it seems like. Claudia Tenney will get the short end of the stick. Meanwhile, for Democrats, they're also going to try to uh, make the first district 
and the second district much more favorable for Democrats by going further into New York. So if we go into this map right here, you can see the first district it now goes further out in um further I guess into New York. And if we zoom in uh to this district, you can see that currently this is what the map um, this is what it looks like. It doesn't go that far into the eastern Long Island portion, but here in this map it does. What it does is it goes through here through uh, Islip. Um, and uh, what it does is it gets Democratic votes there. Now for the second district, what this district is doing is it's uh, going uh, further east to uh, near JFK Airport, closer to JFK Airport. And the main importance of that is there are more Democratic votes as you get closer to New York City. So what they're doing is they're trying to shore up votes by, uh, by kind of place in this so that it goes further into New York with both of these districts and then from there what they're doing in exchange is they're moving the third district a little bit more out so that they can allow the first and second district to go a little more in and if they're able to do that then this would create a Biden uh, uh, two Biden districts and that would be a flip another two seats uh, for the Democrats which would then get them uh, closer to the 23 Democratic uh, majority with those three seats that would create 22. So that final district is coming again from the northwest portion of New York. You can uh, see this district right here. Um, and just assume that this district doesn't exist, but it's coming from this district right here where it's getting placed so that um, there's going to be a split here in Niagara Falls, so 25th and the 26th district. This is currently the 25th district, I believe. Um, and what's happening is this district will get split so that it gets more of the vote in the Republican di uh, district of the 23rd district, or what is to be the 23rd district. And then this district right here will become like the 25th district and go uh, for uh, on the other half, the upper half of Niagara Falls. And for it to be still competitive for Democrats, they are shoring up the district uh, and they are connecting the district over to Rochester, uh, getting the Democratic votes in that region right there. So I assume then, then the 24th district would be Republican because it does not have Rochester, it does not have Syracuse either, which would make it more favorable for Republicans. But no matter what happens though with these kinds of districts, this would be a better map for the Democrats, even if it comes at an expense of partisanship, and even if it comes at the expense of, uh, of um, trying to have a moderate government, because again, redistricting promotes partisanship and it promotes um, more progressive and more conservative uh, candidates who are less likely to work with each other to get stuff done. So that's what's happening with New York. It's a 23 Democratic majority. This is likely to get passed through the state legislature and is likely to get passed by Governor Andrew Cuomo. And thus, Democrats are able to flip four seats, even if it might not counteract the seats that Republicans will flip in Texas, Florida, Indiana, Ohio, North Carolina, uh, Georgia, Missouri, um, uh, Missouri and a bunch of other states. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This video is now adjourned and I'll see you in the next one.